President Jimmy Carter. Democrats uh, are a bit, I guess, like uh, Will Rogers described us when he said, I don't belong to any organized political party. I'm a Democrat. We, uh, we don't have any credentials that you have to prove yourself to be. You don't have to have a pedigree. Uh, we are a diverse and heterogeneous group of people. We have uh, the liberal wing, we have the conservative wing, we have moderates, uh, and even within those wings, we have uh, differences of opinion on different issues. It's important to have differences. Uh, I am a Democrat because I think it's a party that respects differences and is broad enough to include those differences. And I think we are a more vibrant party. All the way back to Thomas Jefferson, the Democrats have been more vibrant, more tuned to the real needs of the people. No wonder, then, that every four years, it's the Republicans who must become the friends of working people, of old people, of poor people. They need the votes. They reject the principle of the greater good for the greater number, which is the cornerstone of democratic American government. We are a traditional party of doing. We represent people that very often don't have strong voices. We are not the party of corporate America. The word liberal has been so uh, trademarked that I can hardly get it out of my mouth anymore. But um, we're a hopeful party and a determined party. And we've come a long way, this country has, in making some of our inequalities more just. Our housing bill last year for the elderly, that won't do the job, but it will begin. When we retrain workers, that won't take care of unemployment chronically in some areas, but it's a start. We don't aren't able overnight to solve all the problems that this country faces, but is that any good reason why we should say, let's not even try? That's what we're going to do today. We are trying. We are trying. No leader can solve all of the complex, impossible problems in this world, and no leader's ever going to. When people say, well, there isn't any way to go, or there isn't a dime's worth of difference, that's wrong. There is a great deal of difference. I have seen the difference. I have seen the increase in uh, money that has come with the various programs. The grants and aids to states and localities has increased by 25%. More minority interests have been paid close attention to and something done about them uh, than ever before uh, in the past. Now, this is the kind of fellow I want to see serving in the White House, a man who has the guts to do the right thing. It is sheer deception to promise the American people that we can have this enormously expensive and unfair tax cut, that we can dramatically increase defense expenditures even above and beyond the substantial levels I've recommended, and that we can sustain our programs in education, employment, health, and other areas, and that we can exercise budget restraint at the same time. You all know that this kind of hasty offer can only be called by one word, and that's irresponsible. Ronald Reagan isn't going to worry about Social Security, and he's not going to worry about the elderly poor uh, in the cities in America. And he's not going to worry about minorities in America, because that's not the basic constituency which will elect a Ronald Reagan. I only have one request to make of you. Vote on election day. Vote for yourselves. You don't have to vote for me. Vote in your own interest. And when you do that, you can only vote one way. Vote for the welfare of the country. Vote for the welfare of the world and vote for your own welfare by voting the Democratic ticket straight on November the 6th. We elect a Democrat, President Carter, on November 4th. <laughs>